Oh my gosh, what are we doing? I don't know. Hey everyone, this is Travis Licata, and I am one half of the whiny parent. Uh, Megan is not here with me right now because I think she'd rather put eye drops in rather than do a podcast. Uh, and in case you don't know Megan, she hates eye drops. So not only is this my first attempt at a solo podcast thing, uh, my wife, Megan, and I have done our very first draft together. So after catching up on a ton of podcasts and seeing others have seemed really kind of a fun time drafting for Survivor Season 40, um, we thought we would do the same thing. Uh, we've created a point system which I will go over with everyone shortly, and then we drafted all 20 players. Uh, now, before we get going, everyone should know that we did this because we wanted to have some, pu uh, have some fun, because as parents, a lot of our time is dedicated to our kids, so we thought, let's do something completely new before Season 40 of Survivor starts. And we put together a draft to broadcast to all of our whiny parent fans out there. Um, that being said, we are not experts. Um, I have not seen every single season of Survivor. I've seen most, but I've still missed out on seasons like uh, 4, 5, and seasons 8 through 11. Uh, those seasons are available on Amazon Prime. Uh, my wife started watching Survivor with me at the start of season 33, Millennials vs. Gen X. So with that being said, we're here to have fun, and hopefully you'll enjoy our draft, because we definitely had fun with this. Uh, quite possibly, had I had much more fun than Megan, but she would not have done a draft if she didn't have any interest in it. So yeah, that is how I'm hyping our first podcast episode. Thanks for being here. <laughs> now, on to our sponsors. Wait, we don't have sponsors. It's just our new video series, Laughing As We Go, where I make cocktails and Megan taste test them. Uh, you can find that video over on whinyparent.com or check us out on YouTube as well. Uh, Laughing As We Go started as strictly a bartender series kind of thing, but we're going to be including any and all things we think to video or share in podcast form, like a Survivor Draft. So thank you for joining me, and let's get to our draft. I'm going to first talk about the point system. Obviously, with drafting every player, one of us will get hit with the haunted first boot, which means one of us will lose three points. Uh, so the first point is at minus three points. Now, granted, Edge of Extinction doesn't mean that person is gone forever. So if a player gets back from Edge of Extinction, they will earn one point. Uh, we'll also be scoring most confessionals per episode. And we will be awarding a player with one point for each episode. Next, if a player finds an idol, they will earn another point. Uh, and if they correctly play an idol, they'll also get a point. Now, something Megan and I decided uh, with the act of playing an idol correctly, you know, what happens if an idol nullifier comes into play? Uh, we decided to not include that element into our point system. If an idol is played, even if it's nullified, if it would have protected that person from the vote, then it'll count. Uh, we're not going to give or take away points from other advantages. Um, so we're just going to stick with the best advantage in the game, which is the Hidden Immunity Idol. And if it, it gets played correctly, we'll reward that person with a point. Um, and I know that's not how it will show up in the game, because if a person puts an Idol Nullifier on a person, the Idol doesn't count. But... For our system, that's how we're going to work it. Uh, next up, if a player makes the merge, they will get a point. If they win individual immunity, they will also earn one point. And I'll put all of this up in an article, so that way, if you can't remember, we'll have it laid out so you can go back to it at any point if you want to do this yourself. Uh, we've decided to recognize some of those crazy moments that happen in Survivor, which means we'll be uh awarding or taking points away for things like rock draws or if players happen to sit out an individual muni challenge so for that like if a player sits out an individual muni challenge and then is voted out 
that player loses one point. If they sit out and then stay in that round, then they'll earn one point. If you survive a rock jaw, you'll get a point. But if you grab that lone rock and you're out, then you lose one point. Um, we really wanted to try to give as many opportunities for points in our draft where it's, where I guess, where there's a clear understanding. Some of the other advantages, we didn't know if awarding points for finding a clue to an idol or legacy advantage would work very well if it'd be worth keeping track of. Uh, plus, we didn't want to take away points for someone finding a disadvantage. Um, uh, so, also, if a player makes the finals, they earn a point. And for the winner pick, that will be worth five points. Uh, we also added a couple additional things, like a secondary slash uh, dark horse pick. Uh, so, me and Megan each pick a second person who we think could win. And if that person happens to win, we'll each get a point. Uh, and possibly the hardest thing that we added was picking a final three. And if you pick a final three, you'll get plus three points. Um, and before I get to who we drafted, our winner picks, our secondary winner pick, and our final three, all of those picks will come from the players that we drafted. Uh, we thought it would just be easier to make selections based off the team that we had. Um, and for our Survivor Season 40 draft, we did a traditional snake order. And essentially, I told Megan I wanted her to have the choice of picking first or picking second and third. Uh, Survivor, it's clearly hard to gauge what's going to happen in a season. Uh, but since I have watched more Survivor seasons and I follow podcasts like Rob has a podcast and I check out articles on Entertainment Weekly. Uh, so I've had the opportunity to hear other people's thoughts on the seasons. Uh, on this season, I did pull up video clips for Megan to try to get some feedback too. And I, I myself generated a notes page from the articles I read to try to help Megan get as much information as possible. And I think Megan might have drafted the best team, to be honest. Uh, so now on to the teams. Uh, Megan's team is named, which I, I, I love. She's calling her team, Anything You Can Do, I Can Do Better. Uh, I, I love the team name. It's the constant thing that she says when we play board games. So it's perfect for her. Uh, my team name, I think, fits perfectly for me. Uh, my team name is My Wife is Right. Uh, so we have Anything You Can Do, I Can Do Better, and My Wife is Right. Uh, so um, before I get to the players, uh, since this podcast endeavor is a new thing for me, uh, I want to send just a Quick thank you out into the ether. Shout out to one of my go-to podcasts. Uh, Rob has a podcast over at robhasawebsite.com. This in no way is a paid sponsorship or anything like that. I just really appreciate the work that's put into the podcast network, which has kind of given me the courage to talk about Survivor by myself in my home. And uh, I love the Know-It-Alls, which features Rob Sesternito and Stephen Fishback, which airs live after each episode of Survivor on Wednesday nights. Uh, plus, I'm a big fan of Why Blank Lost, uh, which is hosted by David Bloomberg and Jessica Lewis. Uh, so again, this is not any kind of paid sponsorship. They don't even know I'm doing this or anything like that. It's just my way to say, hey, check out the these awesome podcasts because they really are great. Uh, because they break down the episodes in such an incredible way while also making predictions for future episodes. Okay, on to the draft. Uh, my first pick goes to one of my, uh, if not my favorite player, uh, he's definitely up there, Jeremy Collins. Uh, such a fan. If he can stay in the middle ground early on, I think that he might be set up really well later down the road. Uh, with picks two and three, Megan selected Danny Boatwright and Yul Kwan. Uh, I think she heard that Danny has been seen as being like an under the radar type player, and there have been a couple 
winner picks out there for her, including Jeff Probst. So I think that might have helped her with that pick. And I, you know, I tried to let her know about Yul Kwan as being, you know, highly intelligent. And if he can get through the early votes, he might be able to do some damage. Uh, next for picks four and five, I selected Tyson Apostle and Michelle Fitzgerald. Uh, I think Tyson is a clear threat, threat to win the game. And getting feedback on Michelle's outlook from an interview with Dalton Ross over at EW really made me think that she might be overlooked, which those types of players in the past have seemed to do well in like all-star type seasons. Uh, picks six and seven, uh, Megan went with Wendell Holland and Kim Spradlin Wolf. And after she made these picks, I think I literally threw my hands up like, I can't believe I missed that. So I think those two picks are possibly the best back-to-back picks of the entire draft. Uh, for 8 and 9, I picked uh, Boston Rob and Parvati. Uh, my view is if they get voted out early, they'll probably get a ton of the air time. Uh, if they can somehow last and get it into a majority, then maybe they'll be able to make a huge impact. Um for picks 10 and 11, Megan goes with Ben Driebergen and Sophie Clark. Uh, Megan and I both like Ben, uh, but I made sure to give her feedback before we started the draft that I really like Sophie. She's a super smart player who knows the game well. Um, and she, if she can find a partner in crime or snake through the early rounds, I think she can make it far. Uh, the 12th and 13th picks for me, I went with Natalie Anderson and Amber Mariano. My thoughts here. Picking the second parts of the pair. Uh, I don't know if Natalie and Jeremy will team up, but they're state, starting on the same tribe, so I'll, I'll take the potential pairing. Plus, having Rob and Amber could be great. The risk is also great because players might want to vote them both out with regards to having Edge of Extinction there. Um, but I'm interested to see how that plays out. Uh, picks 14 and 15 for Megan go to Ethan Zahn and Nick Wilson. Um, Ethan might be able to be seen as a player that doesn't have the immediate threat level, which means he has the potential to go deep in the game. Um, and Nick, that's a tricky one because being the most recent winner, will players be able to fully trust him based off his game? Um, for me, pick 16 and 17, I picked Denise and Tony. Um, I'm a big fan of Denise, uh, and hopefully... I believe what she calls her biggest weakness of not being able to lie well will not go against her in a season of full of amazing players. Um, and for Tony, uh, his reserved interviews give me hope that he's going to be able to assess the situation once the game starts and not have a huge plan going into the season. Uh, Megan's last two picks, uh, two-time champion Sandra and Adam Klein which leaves me with Sarah Lucina. Uh, after going through a bunch of Survivor Season 40 coverage, I made sure that Megan knew that apparently Sarah's name was the one that came up most when talking about early threats. So from the get-go, I, we both knew who was going to be picked last. Um, so let's do a quick recap. Megan's team, anything you can do, I can do better, includes Danny, Yule, Wendell, Kim, Ben, Sophie, Ethan, Nick, Sandra, and Adam. My team, my wife is right, is Jeremy, Tyson, Michelle, Boston, Rob, Parvati, Natalie, Amber, Denise, Tony, and Sarah. Uh, thanks for sticking through with all of this. Um, as the season goes along, I'll provide updates with who has the lead. And who knows, maybe I'll be back and also throw in some analysis to discuss any parts or highlights of Survivor Season 40 winners at war. Uh, so thank you for sticking around with me as I share my first ever solo podcast of anything. Uh, and thank you for checking out the whiny parent at whinyparent.com. And as we move forward with other podcast episodes or vlogs over on laughing as we go, you can find updates over on Facebook and Twitter. Both are at whiny parent, uh, W I N E Y parent. Okay. Uh, Thanks, everyone, for listening, and I will see you next time. Uh, Bye.